I'm Benjamin Price, and today I'll be interviewing Bob Doucet, editor of Glass Onion, a Knives Out Mystery. How are you doing today? I'm doing great. How are you, man? I'm very good. Um, first off, how did Ryan Johnson, when did he first tell you about this project, and how did he sort of describe it to you? Well, you know, we did uh, the, the, the first film, yes. Knives Out, together, and... Uh, um, you know, it, it, it was really well received. So pretty early on, there was the notion that there would be a sequel. And, uh, you know, it kind of came together pretty quickly, right? Yeah. Uh, uh, so um, we just uh, got a call and said, we're going, and can you take a look at the script? And so uh, that's how we started. Yeah. You know, and it was really, really great. I mean, it was exciting to, uh, to read a new script. I love Benoit Blanc, and it was good to have him back again. Yeah. Um, and in what ways did you, t talking about this in comparison with the first film, in what ways did you sort of try to establish a flow and an editing language that was different in comparison to the first one? Well, I don't think that, you know, I don't think there's really a, an intention up front yeah. to, to change the editorial style. And in fact, I think just generally speaking, um, the movie, the screenplay, and, and, and the dailies uh, really speak to you as to how the film should be edited and you just sort of follow that because the movie itself is always king and you try not to or at least I try not to force any type of particular style onto the movie. Uh, one thing I'll say about um, uh, Ryan is that he prefers a really simple straightforward editorial mm -hmm. style uh, which uh, I love and I think is uh, you know, should be applied as much as it can be to any movie. Yeah. Um, but um, uh, that was our always our goal with both uh, uh, Knives Out and and with this picture. Yeah. And well, and I want to talk about a moment of this movie that I loved that is less straightforward. Mm -hmm. uh, a fair amount of the opening of this movie takes place via split screen. Yes. And I want to talk and like morphing split screen. You have yes. a certain cellist pop in for a moment. Yes. Um, yes. Can you talk about? Working within that format, well, and balancing yeah, yeah. all these different, like set locations and characters. Well, you know, I mean, one. I mean, a, a split, split split screens are like a hilarious, yeah. uh, old school technique, which I which I love. You know, I mean, it's absolutely fantastic. It was so fun. No, it's super fun, and it starts with the design, meaning Ryan intended the sequence yeah. to be a split screen sequence because it has to be shot with that in mind. But that said. Um, it gives an enormous amount of, you know, creative possibilities in post, the way that the wipes work, the way people come in and out. And, uh, I mean, it, it couldn't have possibly been more fun doing that because, again, it's an old-school technique um, and, uh, you know, particularly favored in kind of 70s movies. Yeah. Uh, and, uh, and, and it, right, right, and it, right, exactly, as an example. And it, and it was uh, uh, enormously fun to do. Yeah. I mean, uh, just, just a, a blast. And what, is there a particular cut in this movie, avoiding spoilers, uh, that you're most proud you pulled off? I don't think it's anything in particular. Okay. I, I, I don't think it's anything in particular, but, but, but what I would say is that the, a, a film like this, a murder mystery, uh, presents a lot of really unique challenges for the editorial construction of the film. Yeah. In particular, things that you show and things that you don't show, right? Sure. And, um, and, and we really enjoyed sort of... Um, uh, our goal was to be completely honest with the audience. Mm -hmm. So there are a lot of things in the movie which sort of push the boundaries of tipping your hat. And I think one of the real joys of cutting the movie is the knowledge that if you were to go back and watch the movie a second time, you're going to see a lot of things that were there in plain sight but that were not obvious when you uh, saw the movie the first time. And that, to me, is a, you know, was one of the great challenges and excitement of doing this yeah. film. Well, you guys kind of do that in the first one. I remember It's true. my mm -hmm. favorite bit is that it's the same shot of Christopher Plummer with the birthday cake. Yes. But in every one, it's a different person surrounding him. Right, right, exactly. And, and that, that one plays specifically into point of view. Yeah. Right, because it's different characters' point of view of how they remembered the moment. Yeah. Right, and this film does that. This film does that uh, too, but I think even beyond that, what's particularly fun in this movie that's a little bit different is just things that are there in plain sight that you, when when you see it again, you'll go, oh, context. This this information was there. I just didn't yeah. know I needed. I I didn't know that it was important when I watched it the first time. Pancaked. <laughs> yeah. No. Right. Exactly. Um, and working within both in the first one and now Glass Onion. These are both very ensemble-based movies. Is, are there any challenges in, as an editor in approaching that and ensuring that, like,
like talking about with the split screen, you know, that you have a certain level of editorial freedom. Um, I mean, like with this big cast in terms of like singling out these moments. And how do you ensure that everybody gets... Absolutely. And and it's actually one of the most fun things about uh, cutting a movie with the great ensemble like this film. And the first film had a similar, was similar in this way. Yeah. um, Is that uh, it's really important. It's an important part of the job uh, to have all of the performances balanced. Mm -hmm. It doesn't mean that they're kept the same. It just means that they all fit within the movie. And, uh, you know, first of all, you start with, you know, a great cast. Of course. Uh, and then Ryan's written some, exactly, Ryan's written, you know, a lot of really beautiful words and a lot of, a lot of great comedy. Um, and so you start with something that's great to begin with. Yeah. But then, when you put the movie together, you have to really work on the balance of all of those things. And sometimes what that means is, you know, taking a little bit away from this character at this moment because mm-hmm. it's a lot of balance or, or, or building up this character a, a, a little bit because it's out of balance. And that's something that is nuanced and detailed and throughout the film. Uh, uh, and uh, it, it's one of my favorite things about, uh, about editing is these sort of like micro changes that, that on their own are, don't, are seemingly insignificant, but in concert with all the other small changes really add up to something. And when you watch the film, Hopefully, the audience feels this is all, all of these characters are of one world. Yeah. And I imagine there was a certain challenge in this is a movie, not to give anything away, that does sort of flip-flop in time at a certain point. Yes. And where continuity is very important. Yes. And you talked about dailies a little bit, but what time were you, how much time were you spending on set or during production mm-hmm. sort of starting to visualize and decode what you were going to do in post and bringing it all together. Well, here's what happens. Uh, I mean, and this is a common. This isn't specific to to me, um, but you, you know, I was on location with them when they were shooting. Yes. So, so in they, Greece, right, exactly in Greece. Good deal. And and no, it's fantastic. It's pretty pretty good. Pretty good work <laughs> if you can get it. Uh, and uh, uh, so so you know, that first day of photography, mm-hmm. I get that the next day, and yep. then and then I put that material together. And so okay. so when you get to the end, you know, maybe two weeks after we're done shooting, there's a version of the movie. So. So you're building the movie from the very beginning, and then I interact with Ryan. Ryan comes by the cutting room at night some, some mm-hmm. nights, um, and we'll go through material that I've put together, and we both come to understand he can make adjustments based on what he's seeing. He can tell me things that he thinks could be adjusted in the edit. And so it's a, um, you know, it's a, it, it, it's, it's a back and forth that hopefully allows that input of seeing cut material hopefully informs the rest of the production. So you're always making adjustments and reacting to the things that have already been shot. Yeah. And I mean, you know, it's, it's, it's the reason that editorial, you know, is done while the movies are shooting because you can get feedback from the, uh, uh, from the editor and you can make adjustments as needed. You and Ryan are both Trojans. Um, that is correct. <laughs> That's so, correct, USC Film School. Yeah, I'm curious, is there any do you think that it is easier for y- you both to understand each other creatively, having both come out of uh, USC Film School, um, like you're on sort of the same filmmaking plane? I, I I wouldn't I wouldn't say specifically it's related to. I mean, it's not like there's some specific thing about mm-hmm. SC, except that, I mean, and and we're separated by a few years. Yeah. So I, I don't want to I don't want to speak to Ryan's experience. Sure. But I uh, uh, USC was very difficult in a way that's useful, mm-hmm. meaning they were demanding of everyone who went through the program when I went through the program, and I think it really prepares you for the way that the real world is. Yeah. And again, I can't speak because it's been a long time since I went there. I can't I can't speak to. I assume it's even a better version of that now. <laughs> Right. But I, I, I think that there, there is you always have a commonality. Right. I mean, if you go somewhere, there must be something about it. But I have a feeling that it's more about the kind of person that's drawn to that. Great that place, out. Yeah. You know, because it's a kind of a specific thing wanting to go to that place. Yeah. A little bit. Do you know what I mean? Yeah. Because because of, you know, its reputation and probably means to some degree, maybe you <laughs> love Star Wars. I mean, do you know what I mean? It's yes. like there are certain things that are that are touchstones for that that school. I mean, I, I you know, it was really important to me going there, you yeah. know, because of the relationships and, you know, what impact it had on my, um, 
you know, ability to do this job. Uh, so, so yes, there's a commonality, but I don't think there's a style. I, that, that tracks. Okay. Yeah. yeah. Um, well, thank you very much for talking with me Oh, today. you're more than welcome. Thank you very much. Glass Onion is in theaters November 23rd and is on Netflix December 23rd. This is Benjamin Price signing off. See you next time. Bye.